I just think straight away we should just celebrate the fact that Fuji have made a fantastic camera in this. I mean, this is what, eight, 10 years old, and it's fabulous. I just, even though it doesn't have an ISO um, dial, doesn't have exposure compensation dial, if someone told me that, and it doesn't have a viewfinder, those three items, I'd say, well, I'm not really that interested in the camera. But I am, because it's what they've done, they've done it so well that they've made it so small, miniature, and then functionally easy that I don't miss those things. Like here, let me just shut these. So here you've got this dial here and this dial here. Between them, basically here, here, and then the function button, you've got your complete exposure triangle. You've got your, um, between these two, you've got your, your shutter speed and your aperture. And then this function button here does your um, ISO. And, so you're easy can change your shot. I really love this little bit of grip here. I just, it's so handy. You know, the, um, the XE4 could learn from that because it's just got such a lovely grip there and it makes it, just, it just makes that such an easy way to hold the camera. Um, I don't mind the, um, having just the viewfinder, you know. Um, I mean, for me, what this will be, this will work in tandem with my XE1. So I'll have the XE1 with the 35 millimeter lens on it and then um, this one with the 27. And between the pair of them, for my landscape work, I've got two perfect cameras um, with the focal lengths that I use the most. Um, you know, about 50 mil and about 40 mil. They work well for me for landscapes. Yeah, I don't tend to want to always shoot really, really wide landscapes. I like to kind of try and get stories from within the landscape. So, and just, um, just imagine that. Hiking up mountains is so small. Oh, I'm so glad I bought this. So many uh, planes, like literally just really old fashioned, like war planes just keep kind of hovering over above. I wonder if there's some sort of air show. It's nice that the world is kind of coming back into life again around here. It's lovely. Anyway, so the ultimate choice I think in the end will be in terms of choosing if you're going to buy the XM1 or the XE1. I think in the end it will just come down to whether you want a camera that's a fraction smaller, because the XE one's tiny anyway. This one obviously is just a fraction smaller, but the biggest, I think the biggest thing will be whether you are someone who can cope without having a viewfinder. I think if you desperately have to have a viewfinder, then I think you will struggle with the XM1 because obviously, you know, you're having to rely on the fact that you are doing everything through this flippy screen. But having said that, the screen is bright. It's, you know, really effective. I've not actually had any trouble kind of using it at all. Um, so, so in the end, I think you're just going to have to decide, you know, what you prefer. But I do like the layout of this. I love the way that, see on this, this pad at the back, I really like the way that works. Um, there's a lot to be said for this camera. Um, I kind of wish I'd have got it a long time ago. So good. So how on earth is this camera not talked about more? I've just been blown away by the kind of analog, gorgeous um, film-like photos that I've ended up with just from one trip out this morning to the beach. I just, oh, there's a picture here I'll show you now with um, the boat and stuff in the distance. And it just looks like a painting. Um, obviously I've put one of my presets over the top, but it's just brought out that kind of analog feel that you get with this these early sensors um, from Fuji. So, oh, so happy, so impressed with it. Um, from, from that kind of walk and shoot that I just did, I just thought I'd give you a few 
kind of takeaways from it. Firstly, it fits in one hand so nicely and makes, you know, you really can um, just get anywhere with it. You imagine like going up on, you know, hikes and things when I go um, out into the mountains soon, you know, it's gonna be so easy to just sling in a bag. I mean, this is basically, this here is my, is my um, landscape photography kit. I mean, I've gone from, you see some of my previous videos where I got such a lot of gear, even just mirrorless gear, like, but, you know, and old film cameras and all that kind of stuff. I can, <laughs> it's just that, it's, I love it, because it means that it's really um, discreet, you know, and nobody thinks anything of you when you've got this on, they look like a tourist. Um, so I can just happily get on with my work without anyone, you know, getting in the way or anything. But yeah, so takeaways are exposure triangle, like I mentioned on the, um, earlier, just in here, these three areas, um, really simple to use. And because you're not kind of looking through a viewfinder, you actually can just sit, stand with this open and then just happily just fiddle about here um, to get the shots. Um, I, I did it all in manual. I found that easier to do that. So um, yeah, you, you, you've got the exposure um, dial on here as well. So you, um, the meter on here, so you can see what's happening. But I found manual the easiest way um, to use it. Um, yeah, so just very simple. If you compare it in size to the XE1, you know, it is smaller. Not that that was ever big in the first place, but you know, it does give you that extra extra bit of weight loss if you need it. <laughs> I mean, it's so small. So first impressions are, this is an extraordinary camera. Um, if you desperately have to have a viewfinder, then, you know, um, that's a shame. Um, but obviously we've all got our own, our own tastes and preferences. The X70, I don't think has a viewfinder, does it? So, you know, and that camera's obviously like legend, legendary now, but I just think this has got everything that I want in a camera. I've got in the XC1 and I feel like it's all in here, just made a bit smaller. And um, the most important thing for me obviously is that incredible X-Trans1 sensor which this has got in it. And I just feel like the photos really do just give themselves to analog. Ah, oh, it's a joy to shoot with and a joy to, um, to look at after. So I can really recommend this, especially as you can get it for about 94 pounds at the moment. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, thanks ever so much. I'll see you soon.